All right, so let's go ahead and get started with step three here. So we have an interactive game. We can move our character player, but we're missing a couple of things here. So the first thing, you know, we, we don't have a score. So we don't, one of the important things about a game usually is to have some sort of a goal. And for us, we're trying to, to build the score up. So we don't have that. And part of that score is we need to check to see if the player is actually touching the treasure chest. So in this step, we're going to add collision detection to our game. And we're also going to be adding text to the screen to show what the current score is. Okay, so let's what, what is collision detection, first of all? So collision detection is the process of checking to see if two objects in a game or two sprites in a game are touching each other. So basically detecting whether or not they're colliding with each other. All right. So there is going to be a couple of important uh, built in functions that we're going to be looking at um, in this section. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and, and uh, see if we can display the score out to the screen. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a couple new variables here. So I'm going to go up to the top of my code, again, where I'm adding the other variables outside of any other functions. The first one I'm going to add is a, the score variable. So I'm going to write var score. It's going to start out at zero. All right. So then after that, I'm going to add another score, uh, another score variable called high score. All right. And again, make sure you pay attention to the capitalization that I've got. So high score equals zero. And we're not going to implement the high score yet in this step, but we're just going to go ahead and add the variable uh, since we're here. And we're also going to start that at zero. Okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and talk about that later. But for now, let's go down to the draw function and see if we can figure out how to actually draw the, the, the score out to the screen. OK, now, like we said, the draw function is a good place to put our code that does any sort of drawing or, or updating. Right. And so even with check input, um, even though check input is in a different function, we still call it every time and, and draw. All right, so this is where we're going to go ahead and put our uh, code to, to draw out the score to the screen. So I'm going to go underneath of check input, but still inside of the draw function body. OK, and I'm going to just add a little comment here um, to let us know that we're drawing the score. OK, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to call a function that's going to to set the size of the text that we want to draw out to the screen because we want to make it so that it's really nice and easy to see all right and we've got a really useful um built-in function that p5.js gives us called text size all right so text size okay and we pass in a number which represents the size right so I think 30 is a good size 30 um, you know you can try different sizes if you want but I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with 30 so so this is going to be the size of our text and we want to we want to call the the text size we want to set the text size before we draw our our text out to the screen okay because uh, you know it's just like thinking thinking about if you're writing something in real life with paper and, and pen right you don't you don't write something um and then decide okay well i want to make it bigger now like if you're writing with a marker or something you know you want to set all that before you you actually write out the screen okay so we've got the text size all set and ready to go now to actually write the text out to the screen we've got another function called text okay okay so the, the, the text takes a couple of arguments here. So the first thing we, we want to pass out is the, the text. The ar first argument is the actual text that you want to show on the screen. All right. So 
um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in between quotation marks, I'm going to put a label like score here and then a, a, a colon and then a little space there. So let's let's just do that part for, for right now. So we, we're going to put out the score label and then the next argument is the X position on the screen. So I think I'll put it at 10 for the X position. And then the, the last argument that we're going to do is the Y position. So uh, 10 for X and 10 for uh, 40 for Y. OK, so that's my position. So I'm gonna, if I go ahead and run this now, you can see that I have the, the score label that that shows up on the screen. OK, so we, we're not actually showing the score. Right. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do that now. So if we go back and look at this call to text, everything that we put in between parentheses, uh, I'm sorry, not in between parentheses, but in between quotation marks will show up exactly as is written between the quotation marks, all right? And that includes any spaces too, any white space, all right? But here's the thing. We, we, we know that the score is going to be changing, right? So we, we have the score stored in this variable called score, right? So when we were actually writing out to the screen, we want the we want the, the score variable to be replaced by the actual number. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the score um, as still as part of the first argument. So before the comma, but outside of quotation marks. So what we can do is we can join together um, this this um, score label text inside of the quotation marks, we can join it together with the actual variable by outside of the quotation marks, writing a plus sign. Okay. And then write the name of the variable that we want to output, which in this case will be score. Okay. So this is basically saying like, take the, the score label and then join it together with whatever value is stored in the score variable. All right. So when the, the game runs, it will replace that score variable with the actual number that's stored there. OK, so now let's go ahead and try that. Try it again here. OK, so so there we see that we have the score and it outputs the zero. All right. And you see that we had the, the white space that so that that space after the the colon. It shows up exactly as written in between the quotation marks. And then as we go ahead and, and play the game, and once we have the collision detection, that score variable is going to go up. So it's going to be constantly changing as the game progresses. All right. So now we know how to actually write text out to the screen. So go ahead and make sure that you've got that, um, you know, and pause it if you need to right now and, and just go back and double check. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we want to go ahead and check for our collisions now. So we're going to, as you might guess, we're going to write another function. And this one is going to be called check treasure touch. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the, I'm, I'm going to go to the, back to the draw function. So after I, um, after I call the check input, and after I do the, um, or actually maybe I'll put it before the, the score. So let's go ahead and before the, we're drawing the score out, but after check input, let's write check treasure touch. Okay. So we're going to write a, a call to our, our function that we're going to be creating momentarily here. Okay. So now let's go ahead and let's actually start writing our check treasure touch function. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and after, um, after my check input function, I'm going to do a new function, check treasure touch. Okay. Now let's, th let's think about, take a second and think about what needs to happen here inside of this function. Let's put together a sort of a game plan for what needs to happen. So this is going to be where we do our collision detection. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to check the distance between 
the player sprite and our treasure sprite. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is see how far apart they are. Okay. If the distance is less than a certain amount, which we'll, we'll decide on in a second, we'll assume that they're touching. All right. So then we're going to need to check to see if the distance is below a certain number. All right. Now, if the, the distance between the two sprites is indeed within the range we, we decided on, then we're going to increase the score by one and then move the treasure to a new random location on the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and get started with that. So that's our, our plan for how we're going to how we're going to approach this. So the first thing we want to do, we want to get uh, we want to create a variable that's going to store the distance between the two sprites. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and create that right now. Um, uh, it's going to be, I'm going to be creating it inside of the check treasure touch function. Um, and I'm just going to call this variable distance. Okay. A good name for a variable. All right. Now, how do I figure out the distance between the two? So in order to do that, the P5JS library gives us yet another useful function called dist, D-I-S-T, that finds the distance between two points. All right. So the first, so we're going to pass it. So let's go ahead and write that out, dist. Okay. And we, we need to pass it four arguments. So the first two arguments are the, the X and the Y for the first point or, or sprite that we want to check. All right. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to say that the player sprite is the first, uh, is the first sprite that we want to check. So I'm going to do player X and then player y, all right? And then the last two arguments are the um, the, the coordinates to x and y positions for the, the second point that we want. So the treasure x, okay, and treasure y, all right? So that's going, so distance is going to store the uh, result of this dist function with, the, with these, um, these two sprites, all right? So the next step that we're going to do, we need to, so, so we said that we want to check to see if the distance is below a certain number. So let's say that if the sprites are less than 50 pixels apart, we'll assume that they're touching. All right. Um, we, you know, as if you, once we go ahead and add the code, you can try experimenting with different numbers, but I think 50 is a pretty good, um, a, a pretty good number for now. So let's figure out how we're going to do that. So if we're, if we're checking to see if a condition is true, so if the distance is less than a certain amount, that sounds an awful lot like a conditional statement, right? So we're, we're in fact going to be using another if statement, kind of like we did for the check input function. Okay, so we're going to do if. But this time, uh, instead of doing key is down, we can do a little bit of math, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do if distance is less than 50. Okay, so it's that same less than sign that you've seen hopefully in math classes. All right, so if the distance is less than 50, if the distance is less than 50, then we we want to do something, right? What do we want to do? So the first thing we want to do is we want to increase the score by one. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do score uh, plus equals one. All right. So the same way that we did when we were increasing like the player X and the player Y, all right. Score plus equals one. Okay. Now, so that, that's, uh, that should at least get us started. So if we go ahead and run this now, let's just take a look. We notice that, um, if we get in, if, if, if our, we see that our, if our player sprite touches, then the score shoots up really fast, right? Um, so as long as it's touching, it's going to increase the score, but we don't really want it to keep increasing like that, right? Uh, so, so what we really want to do, so we want to move the players, the, I'm sorry, the treasure sprite, whenever we detect that there's a collision between the player and the treasure, all right? So we want to move the, the treasure sprite to a random location on the screen. Okay, 
So we're going to be changing the treasure X and the treasure Y variables. So let's take a look at, at how we can do that. So um, we have another function that we're going to look at and it's called random. All right. So what random does is it gives us a random number. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and let's let's start and, and, and change treasure X. Okay, so treasure X is going to be equal to random. And again, this is inside of my if my uh, curly braces for my if statement. So treasure X is random. And what we'll, we'll pass into random, we'll pass in a number. So let's so for now, let's pass in this a number, um, a built in variable called width, W-I-D-T-H, okay? So that is the, a built-in variable that stores how wide our play screen is, okay? So this random number, if we pass in one number um, to the random function, it gives you a number between zero and up to, but not including the number that you pass in, okay? So um, it'll give you, uh, the, the highest number you'll get back is one less than the number that you pass in. All right. So um, our so the width of our screen, we saw that when we we called create canvas here, um, we set the width of the screen to be 400. OK, so the the, the range of values that treasure X will be uh, will be between zero and um, and three hundred and ninety nine. OK, so one less than the actual width. All right. Let's go ahead and let's try this out here. Okay, good, good, good. So now we see that our our treasure is is moving here. Okay. Now there is a slight problem that can happen, and it's not as as noticeable in, in this case, but you, you can kind of see it here, where notice that the treasure is partly off of the 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 right edge of the screen, right? So so. Um, why that happens is that, and, and, and you know, see, it's kind of how we see that our player can go off of the, the edge of the screen. In some cases, our, our treasure sprite can go a little bit off the screen too, right? And if it goes too far, then you'll only be able to see a little, a little tiny bit. Okay, so see how this went really uh, a lot farther off the side of the screen? Now, the reason that this happens is because when we're talking about the position of a sprite, okay? The, the position, the X and Y position is actually the upper right, uh, I'm sorry, the upper left hand corner of the, of the sprite, all right? So kind of like we, we said that the origin of the screen by default is at the upper left hand corner of the screen, the origin of the position for a sprite is also at the upper left hand corner of the sprite, all right? So our, our X and Y for the sprite might very well be inside of the screen, but that doesn't mean that the rest of the image is inside of the screen, which is what happens here. Okay, so let, how can, can we fix that? Because what might happen is that if it goes too far off the screen, you might not even be able to see it. You know, there have been some cases where it would be like a tiny, tiny little sliver, uh, barely visible. So what we can do is uh, we know that we set the when we created the sprite and we drew it um, here in the image call and draw, we said that the the width and the height of the image was 50 pixels, right? So what we can do is we can do a little bit of an offset. So we can say that instead of passing a random number that is um, up to the width of the screen, let's do a little bit of an offset and and say that the the maximum that we want the, the the treasure position to be is the width minus the um, width of the the sprite itself. Okay, so minus 50. So now what will happen is that the maximum um, position for the for the upper left hand corner of the sprite will be um, 400 minus 50 or, or 350. So if we look at the at the rest of the sprite, so we've got the the sprite's upper left hand corner 
um, is at a given position and if the sprite is 50 pixels wide then the um, then the if, if the the maximum position on the screen of that the sprite can be is at 350 then we know that the rest of the sprite will go no farther than um, 400 which is the width of the whole screen itself okay so we give it a little bit of of wiggle room to accommodate the entire sprite okay so so now if we go ahead and rerun this uh, we should notice that we don't get any more cases where um, the treasure sprite goes off the side of the screen okay okay good so now we can do the same sort of uh, the same step for the treasure y okay so now i'm going to do treasure y uh equals uh random but this time i'm going to use the built-in height variable which gives us how tall the screen is and then still i'm going to go ahead and give us the uh, minus 50 to accommodate the the full height of the sprite as well okay so now we should make sure that we don't have any any treasure sprites going off the screen so that you can't see them anymore okay and now we see that we have a truly random new position on the screen for the treasure so not just along the same uh, x axis but also the y axis as well okay all right so just go back and make sure that everything looks right uh, make sure that your code matches up Make sure that you've actually called treasure touch and draw, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the next step.